Welcome back team. Hernandez has the tablet working again. We're back in action. Um, in today's video, we're going to be looking at pennant fever, which is all about probability and looking specifically at two different methods of calculating probability, the area model and tree diagrams. We've been talking about lists in class and how we create lists and listing out the different probabilities, um, specifically using words as and or the word or to help us determine which rules we should use in, in terms of calculating probabilities. Um, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the other two methods, an area model and a tree diagram, in order to better understand how to calculate probability. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, let's start looking at something called the area model. Uh, the area model is actually something that a lot of students have learned ever since you were in elementary school. Um, it has to just do with areas. Uh, more specifically, the area model uh, tends to use a figure or an image. So I'm going to say we use a figure or image. in order to represent the total number of out outcomes or probabilities. So a figure or image to represent the total amount of outcomes or in other words, possible events. If you remember our class period, we actually used something that was considered an area model, listing out the possible wins and losses for both the good guys and bad guys when we're talking about pennant fever and the end of the season. When we use an area model, we actually use something called the shaded region. So I'm going to say we shade portions of this image. to represent our desired outcome. So sometimes we would color code it. So in other words, this just means to color code your outcomes. So using an example, the one that you may look uh, that may feel a little bit familiar is when we have something that looks like this. We have a circle and using this circle, let me see if I can get to shape really quick. We have a circle here. Oh, didn't want to make the shape. Then we could segment parts of this circle and then shade a certain area within that circle and then find the probability of us landing in that area. So in this case, this area model would represent a value of one over four, or in other words, 25%. Most of the time, in, at this level that we're at, we're gonna be using area models to represent possible outcomes when looking at um, certain scenarios. So let's say there are two teams I'm going to say two baseball teams, since this is something that um, we've already worked on. Two baseball teams. We'll call them G for good guys, B for bad guys. And there are three games left. Okay. And in this case, we want to look at an area model representing both possible teams. So here we would write G, we could write G for good guys, we write B for bad guys, three games left. And here we would segment each opportunity, the good guys, they have three possible games left. The bad guys also have three possible games left. So we'll call this game one, game two, game three. And you can determine kind of the probability of them winning or losing any of these games and then cross-referencing them to, to, to check out what's gonna happen here in the season. 